well over 4,000 miles from the comfort of his own home in Tennessee, a young army corporal served as a messenger on the front lines of France during World War II. He heard a mortar come in close. All he could do was to hit the ground. And when the mortar exploded, it riddled the left side of his body with fragments from that mortar. I spent the next 90 days in the field uh, infantry hospital. Uh, actually, the severity of his wounds were such, it was amazing they didn't uh, send him to a better facility somewhere. But he recovered well, although they did leave a piece of shrapnel in his left lung that he carried there the rest of his life to his grave. Little did Corporal Bob Lamont know that through his pain and sacrifice, a vision would be planted in his heart that would come to impact millions of souls. When he was discharged from the hospital, uh, he was not able to go back to the front lines, he didn't have his strength, so they were looking for something for him to do part-time, or, or limited, uh, required li limited mobility. Um, and he asked for, for permission to be a chaplain's assistant. Uh, well, that was denied because he did not meet the qualifications. But because he had been a faithful witness for the Lord, uh, the company commander <clears throat> knew that he was a Christian, and the company commander was a Christian. And he said, uh, uh, make him a chaplain's assistant. And so, you know, th these are things that uh, God has to have a hand in. <clears throat> they, they're just not by coincidence or accident. Bob Lamont began to pray and write letters, asking for the donation of French Bibles. Although few were sent, a burning desire was lit in his heart as he gave them to the French people. These folks would take that Bible and hug it to their chest and uh, weep. Uh, <clears throat> God planted uh, the seed for this ministry in Dad's heart. Bob Lamont would go on to finish his time in the military and head back to the States with the vision of starting a local church Bible printing ministry. In the years to come, he would become a student at the Bible Baptist Seminary in Fort Worth, Texas, serve under Dr. J. Frank Norris, and establish the first fundamental independent Baptist church in Memphis, Tennessee. Then, on September 19, 1968, Bob Lamont's vision became reality. Dr. Bob Sr. was a man of unusual faith. He believed in things that other people did not even think about. When he began the concept of printing and providing the Word of God, he was a single voice in the wilderness. And the local church publishing ministry owes a great debt to Brother Bob as he was responsible not only in helping us to begin to provide copies of the Word of God, but multitudes of millions of gospel tracts in so many different languages all over the world. Bob Lamont believed more than anything in the world that it was impossible to please God without faith. He wanted to please God more than anything in the world. He felt like getting Bibles to people all across the world was the greatest thing he could do. And he wanted to please God. And he had faith to know that God would help him do that. And he did it.
This ministry would not be what it is today without the hard work and dedication to God by not just Bob Lamont Sr., but also his son. One of the greatest things that Bob Sr. gave us was Bobby Jr. What a tremendous asset he's been to the ministry. As a young teenage boy, he surrendered his life to serve God in a most unusual ministry, printing the Bible. I, I dare say oft times that Brother Bobby's probably one of the most unsung heroes in Christianity today. He's not a preacher, he's not a great pulpiteer, but his passion for the ministry will move your heart. And what he's done and what God has done with his life, only eternity can tell. Uh, Grandpa's burden came out of World War II in 1944, but Dad was raised up uh, it just from the time he was old enough to know. He surrendered his life to Christ and he was faithful at it. He's not known anything his entire life other than full-time ministry, and which is amazing and I'm so proud of his heritage. And I often look at him and say, when I grow up, I want to be just like him. When I think of him, I think of a man that's steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that his labor is not in vain in the Lord. Throughout the years, Bob Lamont Jr. would work the presses at home while his father traveled full time for the ministry. In every trial and through every miracle, they worked together and prayed together. In time, God began to work on the heart of yet a third generation Lamont. In June of 2007, after my pastor preached a message on Joshua 24, 15, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. I went to the altar and surrendered my life to Christ. I said, here am I, send me. Whatever you want me to do, wherever you want me to go, I am your man. Up to that point, I was a criminal justice major. I wanted to be an FBI agent so bad I could taste it. But when God uh, called me into the ministry in June of 2007, I surrendered my life and I have not looked back. I think when Dad hired Shannon, Dad had it in mind that Shannon would learn to operate the shop, oversee the shop, so I could go on the road and, and preach and raise money as he had. But I think the Lord uh, uh, had uh, something different in mind, as he often does. And uh, Shannon was the man that took his grandfather's place on the road. And the Bible tells us the earth is the Lord's and fullness there, the world and all of us that dwell in it. So we belong to God and everything in the world belongs to God. And we're printing scriptures to glorify God. And God said he'll supply our need. Now we believe he will. And that's what it's about. The bottom line is that we need to get the gospel everyone we can to get them saved, get them born again, all the way to heaven. With a life lived for the glory of God and the distribution of his word, Dr. Bob Lamont Sr. was called home to glory on August 30th, 2007. Under God's guidance, Bob Lamont Jr. was called as the next director of BLMF. There was nobody, nobody that was better groomed for the position to, to, to fall into the position of director as the Bible and Literature Missionary Foundation because he has more faith than I believe his, his father had. You know, I mean, I see him order two trailer loads of paper a month and he might have $5,000 in the bank. And he just prays it in. I mean, this is what it is every month. Pastors preach, says, you gotta live by faith. And I see it every day in the life of my dad, Bobby Lamont, that he says, well, we gotta get the paper. We gotta print more Bibles. We've got supporting churches that are counting on us to get the word of God out. So it is our job to get the paper and print it and we'll let God worry about where the money comes from. I did not want this awesome responsibility. 
Uh, but God gave me uh, uh, eight wonderful, wonderful men that accepted the responsibility of serving on a board of directors. I remember when Brother Bobby became director after Dr. Bob Sr. passed away. And I remember with tears, he asked the board, or he told the board, he said, I'm praying that the Lord would give us a double portion. And from that time on, we printed about twice as much as we ever had. With production doubling in two years, they quickly ran out of space and began to look for another facility. When they did find a beautiful 32,000 square foot building, they had no idea what God was about to do. One of our members of the board of directors said, uh, Brother Bobby, our mistake was we should have never looked at that building because once we did, nothing else satisfied. You know, nothing else was nearly as good. And it was just a little over two miles out the same highway where the ministry already was. Um, but they were asking a million dollars for this piece of property, or for the building, excuse me, not, not the whole property, but the building in 10 acres. And I made the statement, I said, uh, we'll never own that piece of property. We'll never own that building. Well, boy, did God surprise me. Without the money in the bank, they decided to take a step of faith, and they made an offer for a little more than half of what the asking price was. Then God began to work. We had a Christian businessman that wrote this ministry uh, a check. I suppose up to that time, the largest contribution probably this ministry had ever received, and only once or twice, if that often, if twice, maybe $100,000. And man, that was few, I mean, seldom, maybe twice. But uh, uh, this Christian businessman uh, made a contribution of, guess how much? $500,000. Through God's miraculous work, an offer was accepted, and God paid for every penny of it. I wish I could take everybody just through the shop and, and show you every piece of equipment and, and relate the story of the miracle that's associated with that piece of equipment. So many, many wonderful things I wish I could share. Uh, uh, maybe if not in this life, we'll have a chance to set them uh, on the other side and uh, rejoice over the goodness of God.